Chapter 24 of the Plum and the Golden Base Chongzhen version of the embroidered portrait, Jing Ji's charming appearance in the Yuan Night Opera. Hu Xiang's angry wife comes. The poem says, The silver candle is high and the soju is drunk, and the feast is full of joy and laughter. With a slim waist, she dances with willows on the stage and sings softly in spring in the garden. The fragrance flows through the clothes deliberately, and the green flowers fall to the ground silently. Not because of a little bit of fun, and Han Cheng woke up after being drunk. It is said that one day, during the lantern festival in the sky, and the lanterns in the world, Simon King hung lanterns in the hall and laid out a banquet. On the 16th day of the first lunar month, the whole family enjoys drinking. Simon King and Wu Yunyang were at the top, while the others, Li Jiar, Meng Yulu, Pan Jinlian, Li Pingar, Sun Zue and Simon eldest sister, were all sitting on both sides, all wearing beautiful clothes. Chun Mai, Yu Xiao, Ying Chen and Orchid Xiang are for kinds of musical instruments. Next to them are the Zheng and singing boards, playing and singing lantern lyrics. I set up a seat in the east to sit with my son-in-law Chen Jingji. Sure enough, the food and cooking are different, and the fruits are fresh when presented. Xiao Yu, Yuing Xiao, Xiao Luan and Xu Chen were all pouring wine on it. Song Huilian, Lai Wang's daughter-in-law, was sitting on a chair into the corridor, eating melon seeds. When someone called for wine, he raised his voice and called out, Come to Anner, Hua Tunger, we want hot wine, please bring it up quickly. No one is here to serve you, and I don't even know where to go. I saw the painting boy scalding the wine. Simon King scolded, Thief slave, no one is here to serve. Where are you going? Thieves don't fight slaves. The boy came up and said, Sister-in-law, who is going there? Just say to dad, shout teach your father to scold me. Huilian said, who taught you not to serve the boss when he wants wine? It's none of my business. Who do you scold if you don't scold me? Hua Tunger said, this ground is clean. My sister-in-law drank it and drank it. There were melon seed peels all over the ground. Dad saw them and scolded them again. Huilian said, it's a thief. It's hot in June so we need to get rid of it as soon as possible. No matter what, if you don't sweep the lunch boxes, just throw them away and teach a boy to sweep them. When he asks me, I just have to say something. The painting boy said, Yeah, sister-in-law, that's all. How can you cooperate with me? Then he got a broom and swept the melon seeds for him, without asking. However, at Simon's celebration banquet, he saw that his son-in-law Chen Jingji was out of wine, so he ordered Pan Jin Lian to deliver a round of wine. Jin Lian hurriedly came down, filled a glass of wine, handed it to Jing Ji with a smile, and said, Brother-in-law, your father ordered me to drink this glass of wine. Jing Ji took the wine and glanced sideways at the woman, said, Wu Niang, please forgive me, wait for my son to eat slowly. The woman turned her body to the light, holding the wine in her left hand. Looking at everyone, he kicked Jin Lian's little foot while playing. The woman smiled and said in a low voice, You're so greasy. What do you think your father-in-law is going to do to you? The two of them were flirting and playing in secret, but no one noticed. Unexpectedly, Song Huilian, the woman, looked at him impatiently through the window outside the door. He said nothing, thinking to himself, We are usually very careful and clear in front of us. But who wants to hook up with this young man secretly? I saw the flaw today. And you will find me again tomorrow. You will have it just say it. Exactly. In most courtyard are white roses secretly climbing three or two branches. Luo's you hides no one, but the fragrant fragrance can only be seen by butterflies. After drinking for a long time, Zyman King was suddenly sent by Count Ying to invite him to enjoy the lanterns. He told Yun Yang. You can have fun while I go to Brother Ying's house for a drink. Dan and Ping and followed. Yun Yang and her sisters ate for a while, but they saw that the Milky Way was clear and shallow, with beads and spots on it. A round bright moon came out from the east, illuminating the courtyard as if it were daytime. Women may be changing clothes in the room, putting on makeup under the moonlight, or wearing flowers in front of a lamp. Only Yulu, Jin Lian and Li Pinger were holding lotuses together, watching Jing Ji put flowers in front of the hall. 
Li Jiar, Sun Zue, and Sister Zaiman all followed Yun Yang. Jin Lian then said to the two of them, His father is not at home today. Let's tell my eldest sister to walk to the street. Hui Lian said from the side, Go, ladies, take me with you. Jin Lian said, Since you want to go, you should go back and ask your aunt and your second mother to see if he is going. We are waiting for you here. Hui Lian hurriedly went back. Yulu said, He can't help. Wait until I ask him personally. Li Pingar said, I'll also put on some clothes in the house. Just because it's late at night. Jin Lian said, Sisterly, do you have a coat? Son, bring something for me to wear, so that I don't have to go to the house. Then Li Pingar agreed. Jin Lian was left alone, watching Jingji put flowers. Seeing no one there, he walked over to Jingji, pinched him, and said with a smile, Brother-in-law is only wearing thin clothes. Doesn't it hurt the cold? I saw the family's son, Little Iron Stick, smiling in front of him, dancing and pulling. Jingji needs to be fired. This Jingji might have disturbed things, so he wished he could have to lantern festivals with him and send him to play outside. So she and Jin Lian mocked and said, You old man, seeing that I am so thin, why are you willing to give me a piece of clothing to wear? Jin Lian said, The thief's life is short, and he gets used to it. He creeps on my feet. I didn't say anything, but now I'm bold and come to ask me for clothes. I'm not the one you insinuated, so why do you want to wear your clothes? Jingji said, It's fine if you don't agree. How can you build a raft to bluff me? The woman said, The thief has a short life. You are a sparrow on the city tower, a frightened and frightened insect. Just as she was talking, she saw Yulu and Huilian coming out and said to Jinlian, My eldest sister is not comfortable because of her inconvenience. So I won't go, teach the ladies to walk and come home earlier. Li Jiar didn't leave because her legs hurt. Sun Zui didn't leave when she saw her eldest sister. She was afraid that his father would come home and anger him, so she didn't go out either. Jin Lian said, Don't go. Just me and sister Li. Wait for his father to come home. Let him scold you. If not, put the spring plum meat and the jade flute in the room. And the orchids in your room will be fragrant. Li I brought them all to the eldest sister's room to welcome the spring. Xiao Yu came over and said, My grandma is not going, so I will go for a walk with the ladies. Yu Lu said, Tell your grandma, I'll wait for you. After a long time, Xiao Yu asked Yun Yang and smiled. Now three women were leading a group of men and women. Two young men, Lion and Hua Tong, followed with a pair of Ga chandeliers. The son in La Chen Jingji kicked the horse platform and set off fireworks and cannons to watch the women. Song Huilian said, Uncle, please wait a moment. Ladies, take me for a walk, and I'll come back to the house to chat with you. Jingji said, We can do it now. Huilian said, Don't wait. I will annoy you for the rest of my life. So he walked into the house and changed into a pair of green flash red satin blouse and white threaded skirt. He also put a gold sweat scarf with red pins on his head, with flying gold flowers on his forehead, and gold lanterns hanging on his ears. He came out and followed the crowd, by mire, and of the moonlight. They look like immortals, all wearing white silk coats and covered with golden armor. His head is piled with pearls and greenery. His face is pink and his lips are red. Jingji and Lexinger, one on each side, slowly follow the road to bloom lotuses, goldenrods, one foot long orchids, and Sai Yuming. When I walked out of the main market, I saw constant fragrance. Tourists like ants, fireworks and thunder, colorful lights, and the sound of flutes and drums, which was very lively. Visitors saw a pair of gauze lanterns leading the way, and a group of men and women, all dressed in red and green, came over. They thought they were coming from the prince's home, so they didn't dare to look up, so they all hid in the way. Song Huilian once called, Uncle, please put a bucket of flowers and let me watch. Another time she said, Uncle, please put a lantern festival cannon for me to listen to. One time, he dropped the flowers and picked up the flowers. He lost his shoes again and was holding on to others while carrying his shoes. He walked back and forth, only teasing Jingji. Yulu looked down on him and said something. 
How come you have lost your shoes? Yu Xiao said. He is afraid of the mud, so he is wearing one Yang shoes. Yu Lu said, ask him to come over and let me see. Are you really wearing one Yang shoes? Jin Lian said. He asked me for a pair of shoes yesterday, but who would have thought? That the dog meat that has become sperm can be worn as a pair. Hua Lian picked up her skirt and looked at it with Yu Lu. I saw him wearing two pairs of red shoes on his feet and tying his trouser legs with gauze green thread straps. He said nothing. After a while, I walked through the street and arrived at the lantern market. Jin Lian said to Yu Lu, let's go to Sister Li's house on Lion Street now. Then she told the painting boy and Lianer to light the lanterns first and meander to Lion Street. The boy went to open the door first. Old Fang had already rested. In the room were two girls who were sold by others, sleeping on the Kang. The panicked Old Fang quickly opened the door and let the women in. He turned on the stove and had some tea, then took the pot and went to the street to get some wine. Meng Yulu said, Lao Fang, please stay here and don't go to get drinks. We are full at home with wine and food. If you have tea, pour the baskets and eat it. Jin Lian said, since you are leaving people to drink, order the dishes first. Leaping Er said, Mom, I brought the bottles in one bottle. If the water is not muddy, who can eat it? I need to bring one or two jars, Yulu said. He's coaxing you, not canceling, just waiting for the tea to come. The woman just didn't move, Li Pinger said, Mom, why don't you go for a walk over there? What are you doing at home? The mother-in-law said, Grandma, look at these two karmic obstacles in the house. Who is watching? Yulu then asked, Whose family sold these two girls? The mother-in-law said, one is a maid from a house in the north. She is 13 years old and only has five tails of silver. The other is a daughter-in-law from Wang Zubin's family. After the family left, the master tied up his hair and took it out to sell for 10 tails of silver. Yulu said, Mom, I told you that there is a man who wants you, so you can earn some money from him. The mother-in-law said, Three tails of silver, mother? Who really wants it, tell me. Yulu said, now there is only Yu Wang Shuair in your second mother's room, which is not enough, and she is looking for an older girl to serve her. You should sell the older one to him, because he asked, How old is this girl? The mother-in-law said, He is 17 years old this year. After saying that, he brought tea and everyone drank it. The Chun Mai, Yu Xiao and Huilian were all looked at in front of them, and then they went to the upper floor facing the street and opened the window to look at them again. Chen Jingji urged, It's late at night. Let's go home quickly. Jin Lian said, It's strange that life is short. The person who is urging me can't stop. What are you panicking about? Then he called Chen Mai and others to come. And just then get up. When Feng's mother sent him out, Li Pinger asked, Where did you go safely? The mother-in-law said, we haven't come here yet today. So I asked me to open the door and close the door in the middle of the night to wait for him. Lai Anner said, It's safe today. I followed my father to Ying's second father's house. Li Pinger told her mother, Close the door early and go to bed. He won't come at all, so as not to miss your sleepy head. Come to the house early tomorrow morning. Send the girl and the second mother here. You are the elder of Shifo Temple. And I will invite you to Zhangzi. After saying that, he watched him close the door, and the group of men and women just went home. When I walked to the door of the house, I heard the voice of Han Huizi's wife, Han Sauer, who lived in the house. Because he was a man and promised to be the minister of the stable, he followed people at home and became ill. When he came home drunk, he said that someone had opened his door, stolen his dog, and some things were missing. He sat in the street, drank and cursed people wildly. The women just stood still. Jin Lian and Boy Lai Anner called Sister in Law Han to her face and asked, Why are you here? Sister in Law Han crossed her hands forward, bowed twice, and said, My dear ladies, please listen to what I have to say. So I said it again from the beginning. After hearing this, everyone in the Yulu took out some money and fruits from their sleeves and gave him some fruits. They called Anner and said, Tell your brother in law Chen to take him into the house. He goes, Jin Lian and Boy came to Anner to help him to his home and told him to come to the house to wash clothes tomorrow morning. I told your father to vent my anger for you. 
The Han sister-in-law thanked him profusely and went home. Yu Wu and others had just walked through the door when they saw Lady Bai, smiling and wishing blessings before the door, and said, Where are you three ladies? Please don't give up and offer tea to Han's house, Yu Lu said. Just now, because of the Han sister-in-law was crying, so I stopped and asked him, Thanks to my sister-in-law's kindness. It's getting late, so I won't arrive, Madam Baisi said. Yeah, the three ladies came to the house to be weird, and they laughed at my little family for not serving tea. Won't you have a drink? Shengsheng pulled him into the room. It turns out that the eight difficult things to Guanyin and the saints are offered to them above, and a snowflake lantern is hung on the door. Open the door curtain, set up a spring platform, and sit with three people. He quickly taught his 14-year-old daughter, the eldest sister, to come over, pout out to the three mothers, and hand them tea. Yulu and Jinlian each gave him de flowers. Li Pinger took a sweat towel and a penny from his sleeve, and bought melon seeds to eat with him. Lady Bai, who liked her, thanked her again and again, unable to keep the money. Yulu and others got up. When I arrived at the front door, the young man came to greet me at the front door, Jin Leon asked. Has your father ever come home? Lake Sing said, Dad hasn't come home yet. The three women also watched Chen Jingji put to one foot long chrysanthemums and a tube of smoked orchids at the door. A gold lamp and silver stand went to the back. Simon King didn't come home until the fourth watch. Exactly, after being drunk. He didn't realize how dark the sky was, so he let him go down to the west building under the bright moon. But he said that Chen Jingji had been ridiculing Jin Lian and other women because of his various illnesses, and that he and Hua Lian were talking back and forth with intention. The next morning after washing up, I didn't go into the shop and went directly to Wu Yun Yang's room at the back. I saw Li Jiar and Jin Lian accompanying Wu Da Guzi, setting the Kang table and setting out tea. Yun Yang went to burn incense in the Buddhist hall. The young man bowed forward and sat down. Jin Lian then said, Brother-in-law Chen, you are such a good man. Yesterday I taught you to send Han's sister-in-law off, but you didn't move. You just treated her like a servant and sent her away. I don't know what Zhang Zi said when you were quarreling with your wife. Wait for your aunt to burn incense and see if I tell him or not. Jing Ji said, you old man. You are still saying that your son almost had an ulcer on his waist yesterday. I walk with you all the way. And then how many miles will it take to get back to the Lion Street house? I have gone hard and taught me to send Han Weezy's wife. It's just a matter of teaching the boy to send her off. God will tell after how long I have slept, and I still can't get up this morning. Just as he was talking, Wu Yunyang burned incense and Jingji bowed. Yunyang then asked, Why did sister-in-law Han get drunk and curse so much yesterday? Jingji had his door open due to various illnesses and the dog was missing. He sat in the street crying and cursing. This man came home this morning, and he it's time to fight, but we haven't gotten up yet. Jin Lian said, we came back and persuaded him to go in, but your father came to the house and bumped into him. What would it look like? After saying that, Yu Lu, Li Pinger, and the eldest sister all went to Yun Yang's house to have tea, and Jingji also had tea with her. The next time the eldest sister came back to the room, she scolded Jingji. You don't know how to die. You and Lai Wang's daughter-in-law had a quarrel with each other. If the father suddenly finds out about it, the adulterer will be fine, and you will not be executed. But he said that that day, Simon King stayed in Li Pingara's room and got up late. I saw Jing Qian Hu, a newly promoted soldier and horse supervisor coming to pay his respects. Simon Ching Kai got up, combed his hair, wrapped a net towel, got dressed, came out, and chatted with Jing Dujian in the hall. On the one hand, Ping Inner went to the back and asked for tea. Song Huilian was playing with Yu Xiao and Xiao Yu in the backyard, betting on melon seeds and getting into a fight. Xiao Yu rode the jade flute underneath and scolded with a smile. You thief whore, you lost the melon seeds. Don't teach me how to beat them, she called Huilian. Sister-in-law, come here. Pull one of the whore's legs. Wait for me to enter Japan this sled is all of a sudden. Just as he was stubborn, he saw Ping and coming and called, Sister Yuxiao, Father Jing is here and asked me to come in and ask for tea. 
Yu Xiao ignored him and talked with Xiao Yu fighting and playing. Ping Inner just urged him, You've been sitting down for a day. Song Huilian said, It's weird, I want tea. And asked the cook in the kitchen to go to the stove. Why do you just stay here with me? I'm just making preparations from behind. The tea used in my parents' room doesn't care about the tent outside. Ping Inner walked to the kitchen. On that day, Hu Xiang came to protect his wife. Hu Xiang said, Prisoner, I'm cooking with my hands here. Just ask for two minutes of tea from behind. Baba comes and asks me for tea. Ping In said, I'll be there later. Come on, I won't serve tea later. Sister-in-law Huilian said that it should be the beginning and the end of the stove. Hu Xiang scolded. Whore. He decided that he is from my parents' room. I was born to go to the stove. Here I cook rice for everyone and stir-fry vegetables for the big girl. How many hands do you have? Just pour the tea, Baba came to find the one who came to the stove. Was it you who called the one who came to the stove? Wrong. It doesn't matter if it's tea. I won't send it to you. Ping Inner said, Dad Jing is here today. Sister-in-law, hurry up and send the tea, and I'll get it. If you're late, it'll make you scold me again. Now I was pushing here, there, and there, which wasted half a day. After waiting for Yu Xiao to come out with tea fruits and teaspoons, and Ping Inner to come out with tea, the prisoner of Jingdu had been sitting there for a long time, and tried to get up again and again, but was stopped by Simon King. He thought the tea was cold and unpalatable, so he scolded Ping In for another cup of tea, and then he got up and went to Jingdu prison. Simon King came in and asked, Who made the tea today? Ping In said, It was the tea on the stove. Simon King returned to the upper room and told Yun Yang, If you make the tea like this today, you can check it in the kitchen. Which servant wife is going to the stove? Pick it out and ask him, How many times should he be beaten? Xiao Yu said, Today, it is Hu Xiang's time to go to the stove. The panicked Yun Yang said, This crooked bone is waiting to die. The more you drink the tea, the more likely it is. It's over. Xiao Yu asked Hu Xiang to kneel down in the courtyard and asked him how much he wanted to fight. Hu Xiang replied, Because I was cooking and stir frying the vegetable vegetables. The tea was a little cold. Yun Yang scolded him several times and spared him. He ordered, From now on, whenever someone comes in front of your father, teach Yu Xiao and Huilian how to have tea behind you. And the stove will only be in charge of tea and food for everyone. Hu Xiang couldn't bear his anger in the kitchen. Simon Kang, who had just been waiting, went out. Angrily, he came behind, looked for Huilian, pointed and cursed. Thief, whore, I took advantage of your heart. That's all. You were born those are the lucky parents who live in the house. Are we the wife of the stove? Baba asked the boy to sit down and ask the stove for tea. Is it you who call the stove? You know what I know. So we don't eat toads. Meat, they are all natives. You are just not my father's little wife. Even if you are my father's little wife, I am not afraid of you, Huilian said. It doesn't matter. You didn't drink the tea well, father. Why do you care about me? How do you take out someone's anger? After hearing this, Hu Xiang became more and more angry and cursed. Whore. You just instigated me to beat me with a few sticks. Why didn't you teach me to beat me? You have raised countless Hans in the Kai family, and you are here to make trouble. Huilian said, I raise Hans. You see me here. It's not ridiculous. Sister-in-law, you are not a pure aunt either. Hu Xiang said said, why am I not a pure aunt? Crossing my feet, I'm better than a whore like you. You man has a handful of millet to count. When you are outside, who doesn't eat it and you laugh at it? What kind of business do you do behind your back? Just say that people don't know. You don't care about women, let alone the people below, Huilian said. What did I say behind my back? Why don't you care about me? You can suppress me. I am not afraid of you, Hu Xiang said. You know you're not afraid of someone making the decision with you. The two were bickering when Yun Yang, who was invited by Xiao Yu, came and drank both of them. You stinky bitches, don't do this. When you go to work for a living, what are you doing? It's another fight if your master hears it. I didn't succeed in the fight, but I succeeded when I got back. Hu Xiang said, if you hit me, I will. It doesn't matter if you don't seduce the whore, 
I'm risking my life. And it won't be a big deal if I reject you. Let's all leave this house. He said and walked forward. The next time, Song Huilian became more and more arrogant, colluding with Simon King behind his back. Keeping everyone in the family out of sight. And playing with Yu Lu, Jin Lian, Li Binger, Sister Simon, and Chun Mai every day. That day, Feng's mother sent a girl, about 13 years old, to Li Pingara's room to see her, and then sent her to Li Jiaora's room. Li Jiaora bought it for five tails of silver, and waited on him in the room. Exactly, it's a waste of birds on the outside and a waste of color on the inside. It doesn't matter if you even get a few seeds. In the morning, I can ride on the carved saddle. And at dusk, I will come back with red and pink fragrance. All right. This part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.